Let me pour you a glass of wine. Where are we going with this? We, oui, France. But we're also going to get into our time machine, going back to 1639. And there was an epidemic of a disease. People started to suffer from colic, that is pain in the gut. They started to have memory problems, constipation problems, fever, aches and pains of all kinds. It came to be called colic pictonum. And uh, nobody knew what was causing this. Well, it turned out that a clever German physician by the name of Eberhard Guckel solved this problem. Guckel was uh, the physician in the town of Ulm in Germany, and he looked out after monasteries in the area. And many of the monks in these monasteries were suffering the same kind of colic that he had heard about coming from other parts of, of, of France. He didn't know what this was all about. But one day, when he was visiting his monk patients in the monastery, he was offered a glass of wine. And he took a sip, and he started to feel unwell. And he became very sick, just like the patient, just like the monks. He didn't know what it was, but he started to think, maybe it was the wine, and he went down to the wine cellar. And he looked at the barrel that the monks had been drinking from, and he found the sediment in the bottom. And he was very suspicious. And he tracked down the wine merchant. And he asked, how did he make his wine? And the merchant quite openly told him, look, uh, you know, it wasn't a great vintage. And we added some litharge. Well, litharge is naturally occurring lead oxide. And it was quite common in those days to add this to wine, especially to wine that had a bit of a sour uh, flavor to give it some uh, sweetness. They didn't know there was anything wrong with that. Indeed, the ancient Romans first discovered this notion. They had stored wine in lead containers and found that it became sweet. And then they would even take the wine and boil it down in these lead containers to come up with a syrup they called sapa. And they would use that as a sweetener. They would add it to wine and to other things. And this had been going on in history without anyone ever relating the symptoms to, to lead poisoning. So in any case, uh, Gökul, was pretty clever, and he figured out that maybe this was the issue. And uh, the town of Ulm then instituted laws that no longer would they allow anyone to add anything to the wine, especially not, not any lead component. And uh, who would have thought that, that people would abide by this immediately? Well, not everyone abided by this. Why? Because when there's money to be made, of course, uh, people will uh, disregard the law. Until there was one more wine merchant who was caught fixing the wine again. And this was in Stuttgart, again in Germany, and he was beheaded. And uh, that brought a stop to doctoring the wine with, uh, with lead. But this had been going on since the time of the Romans. And it was this one clever doctor uh, in Germany uh, who came up with the solution. And he was a very interesting person, not one that you would have thought would come up with such a, a solution. Why? Because he had also written uh, a book on diseases in which he claimed that werewolves were able to cause disease and witches were able to cause disease. So he was off track on that, but he was right on track with the wine. And uh, these days, of course, we no longer have to worry about lead being added to wine. Mm. Avacar Santé.